Hola gente hermosa, ¿cómo están? Antes de arrancar este video les sugiero que activen los subtítulos acá en el video y que le vayan a poner me gusta si quieren y seguir a Don Juan, que este es un video traducido de su canal comentado por mí. Lógicamente todos los créditos van para él, es una bestia y le agradezco con el alma porque la verdad que me da de comer gratis. Nada, <risa> no, le agradezco con el alma porque la verdad que hace muy buen contenido y se merece mucha más notoriedad de la que tiene. Gracias, thank you, gracias Don Pap. Y vamos directamente a lo que nos compete, lo que nos interesa. No te olvides de activar los subtítulos, seguime y activar las notificaciones, la campanita y suscríbete. Vamos directamente. Udyr es uno de los oldest champions en League of Legends. He's been around since the very beginning. But unlike other champions who've been around for a long time, Udyr hasn't had many updates on his kit. When you look at other champions and read through their abilities, you need a Wikipedia page to be able to understand them. Si necesita directamente la facultad para entender esto por el amor de Cristo. But Udyr's kit is extremely simple and has always been very simple. His passive is a move speed buff, one damage ability, one shield ability, one stun ability, and one AoE ability. That's it, he's a very simple champion. But when he's competing against champions with stuns, snares, slows, sleeps, a simple champion like Udyr can feel somewhat outdated. And that is reflected in the fact that many Udyr players have difficulty climbing this season. But there is one player who has been able to consistently stay high elo, playing one of League of Legends' most basic champions. This is how to play like a challenger. Hey there guys, I'm Metasolore. I am one of North America's highest ranked Mira eso, gran maestro, 57 puntos de liga, 579 victorias, 555 derrotas Quiero aclarar desde el vamos que Udir a mí me parece una poronga gigante Pero valoro y aprecio a la gente que lo hace funcionar al personaje Y está muy interesante lo que cuenta esta persona, el OTP O sea, 1025 jugaba con Udir, me parece que juega un poco Actually reached Challenger in Season 9, hovering about 636 LP for a good month or two And in this season, I'm actually the rank 1 Udir at the time of this recording With Udir, a lot of you guys get stuck on the same old build every single day you run warrior triforce and then you find yourself you can't climb i show you guys how to adapt your builds to have more than just one build style so you can go to any match with one of the oldest champions in the game and adapt to every single challenge you're faced with you want to prove you're the best if you want any kind of sign to show that you are a better jungler than your enemies Udyr is the most basic kit you can get away with. This champion forces you to learn how to adapt to your gameplay, how to take control of your game. Your macro must be on point. You don't have special tits that get you out. You don't have any kit. You don't have a special damage reduction that can get you out of a bad situation. You don't have a gap closer or wall jump to get you out of your bad situation. ¿Qué es el problema que tiene Udyr? No tenés cómo escaparte, no tenés cómo entrar, no hay forma de salir de una mala situación, no te podés poner en una mala situación con Udyr. Ese es el problema que tiene el personaje. Es tan sencillo, es tan básico que no tiene las herramientas que tienen otros campeones que son meta. If there is a playstyle that you love, Udyr can adapt to it and he can show you how to be the best. When it comes to this champion, Trick G is synonymous when talking about Udyr. His obnoxious and disrespectful playstyle invented the split push meta on Udyr known as opening the gates. Meaning, you ignore your team and go for the nexus. Uno de los streamers que a mí realmente me dio la pasión para empezar a streamer es una fucking bestia y es un cago de risa. Just end, please for the love of God. Rip is on our way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> Trick, you dumb, you dumb motherfucker, you dumb motherfucker. You dumb motherfucker. You dumb motherfucker. Shut your fuck ass up, bro. That's how I play. Disrespect. Trick is he is the original. He is the god here. We'll put it like this: If you're playing Udyr, you're going every conversation is going to always bring up Trick. It's just part part of the course. And honestly, he is one of the best players in North America. He is the original god and He's probably better than a lot of people. But if you ask who's better, I've climbed higher, but I'm also, I'm tryharding. It's as simple as that. I climbed a challenger. I held challenger last year. Eh, 100 LP grandmasters this season. Simple. Ahí no me gustó un poquito el video porque oh, se pregunta quién es mejor. Y bueno, eh, pregunta, eh, tipo, a mí no me jura nadie, pero bueno, yo, yo subí más alto. <laughs> Was that? I've climbed higher this season. En parte tiene razón, pero Udyr, a Trick, amigo, Trick ya se hizo la fama con Udyr, chavo. No, no hace falta subir a challenge. Is he one of the best? Absolutely. But if I had to say between the two of us, I'd have to say I think I'm stronger. And if, you know, comes the day he wants to put that to the test, I'm glad to match him. The infamous Trick 2G split push style is no longer really viable. In the current meta, being away from objectives is not any way to climb in the solo queue in any region. 
As a jungler, you, when you split push, you take resources from one of your laners, which can not only cause them to play even worse, but honestly even hurt yourself and your allies because they're now forced to only farm your jungle for resources, meaning they get less overall XP for your team, which in the end will just result in you having people some really, really crappy gameplay. So many people are always saying, oh, I need to compare myself to, you know, if you're a Yasuo main, you're always thinking about Mo or Way of the Tempest. If you're an Udyr main, you're always trying to think about, oh, I want to be like Trick or... My main thing is I'm worried about improving myself because at the end of the day, those people aren't playing the game for me. They're not sitting down playing it. Eso está excelente, boludo, lo que está diciendo. Jugá por vos mismo, mejorá vos mismo o vos misma. No te concentres en imitar a otra persona. Encontrá tu estilo de juego y mejorá tu propio gameplay porque esas personas no te van a carrear. Eso es excelente. For me. So why the hell am I going to focus on them? I want to improve myself. I want to be the best I can be. And if that happens to be the best in North America, so be it. Then I'll be the thing that everyone else needs to be. One of the biggest differences between Meta and Trick2G's playstyles is the fact that Meta adapts to the meta. He has three separate item and rune builds unique to each situation that he goes up against. His most popular one is his Medir page, which is an Aftershock full tank Udyr. He essentially just tries to use Udyr's good base stats and tank for his team. This playstyle is very ideal against enemy compositions with a lot of CC and ally compositions without a solid frontline. He has a press the attack page where he buys items like Blade of the Rune King and Wint's End. Much more ideal for skirmishing and junglers that want to invade him. And he also has a comp. Básicamente la primera es quiero aguantar cuando tiene mucho CC. La segunda es quiero recagarme a trompadas con todo el mundo y no me importa y no tienen tanto CC. Y la tercera. Her page where he stacks HP like Cinder Hulk and Black Cleaver. This build is far more ideal against tanky compositions with. Para con obviamente conquistador para jugar contra campeones o composiciones mucho más tanques. Several bruisers on their team. Meta does not sit on one Udir build because Udir isn't a champion that's good enough to be able to sit on one build. Udir's kit is extremely simple and so you got to do a lot more adaptions and a lot more work to be able to get to the same level as other junglers. Yeah. You can't just build straight bruiser damage like Graves and expect to do well every single game. Now one of the most important parts of Udir is proper stance rotation. Even if you have max CDR on Udir, there's a global cooldown on his stances of a flat two seconds. So you want to make sure that you're rotating your stances at the proper time. How does Meta choose which stances to use and how eh? often? One of the main things when you're playing Udir is proper stance rotation. When you're cleaning your jungle camps, you want to go for a cycle of 4-2, four, 4 tiger stance, auto attack, followed by 2 in your turtle or bear stance. Once you get your cinder hook, then you can actually start using bear stance to open up on jungle camps to go ahead and get a cinder hulk emulate passive off and then kind of going back to as many tiger attacks as you can before the monkey's agility wears off and swapping into turtles the main point of this is to stack monkey's agility which gives udir 30 percent attack speed as well as 15 base movement speed increase which is a really great way to increase your stats in the early game when champions don't have that much stats to work with so i would go blue gromp wolves if I have no gank to make at that moment, I'll go ahead and do Raptors, but if I see a gank opportunity, I'll go ahead and do Red and then go for that gank. Get Red, so that way, with five camps under my belt, if I get any one of the Scuttles, I'll hit level four and be a lot stronger than most junglers, who will only be about level three unless they commit to a full clear in the jungle. His stand stancing costs a lot of mana that's going to quickly eat up through your resources, meaning that you want to have your blue buff as soon as possible. Oftentimes, I'll even sacrifice my red buff if it means I can secure blue. Udyr is undoubtedly an early to mid game champion. And one of the most common ways that Udyr players in lower elos get ahead is by invading and killing the enemy jungler. However, this is not really a viable strategy often in high elo. If meta doesn't have priority in any of his lanes, he can't actually go in for invades. Enemy laners are much more quicker to respond and help their jungler. So while Meta often doesn't go for invades to kill the enemy jungler, he does invade and get a lead in a different way. In the early game, if you get a great early game play, such as, you know, you got a first, a first kill on a level 4 gank, or even better, you got a kill and you slaughter the enemy jungler, to push your leads on Udyr, you have to be aggressive. You have to play that map control. So one of the biggest things I look to do is on my first back, try to get that control ward and put it into the enemy's jungle. Once I got that deep vision, guys, I'm looking to invade the enemy jungle and make his jungle part of my camp rotation. Even if the enemy jungle is getting off successful game, XP is king. If you can get enough XP to get your base levels, you can easily average two, 
three, even four levels on the enemy. Bueno, eso digamos es lo más complicado de este tipo de, de estilo de juego, como juega el chabón, el tipo guardea la jungla enemiga para ver por dónde arranca el rival y usa la jungla enemiga como parte de sus campamentos para su rotación. Jungler. And despite them being 403, if they're not getting any jungle camps, you're absorbing that XP for yourself, you're going to come out in the mid game a absolute monster. Every time Dragon comes up, call your teammates over with your higher XP value so you have the stronger smite, secure those dragons, and start threatening early Rift Heralds. Rift Heralds is one of the biggest resources all of you are missing out on. It is a guaranteed 320 gold for your team. And if you take two to three tower plays before summoning that Rift Herald, you can even guarantee first blood tower from a fully untouched turret off a single gank. One of the biggest problems with Udyr is the fact that he is not very useful in a team fight. All of his abilities are pretty much single target, and he doesn't have great tools to be able to peel or to dive. Udyr's lack of team fight capabilities is one of the biggest reasons that most Udyr players just choose to go split push after the mid game is over. But since Meta obviously doesn't condone that split push style, he does something different. One of the most common misconceptions that Udyr is actually useless in team fights. For myself, always team fight and always look for play because I believe that's actually one of Udyr's strongest points. Udyr is one of the few champions who has a stun they can apply on multiple targets in a team fight, and his ability to stat check enemy frontline as well as even backline with the slightest amount of a lead make you a wonderful wall to protect your teammates. So in team fights with Udyr, a lot of players try to play like an assassin, rushing straight into the enemy ADC, and then they end up getting kited, peeled, and chunked by the enemy frontline. Udyr's place is in the frontline. You want to be in the middle of all the chaos, sucking up as much damage for your allies, Exorbing that with your shield whilst taking out turtle stances as often as possible and get that little auto attack in there. Then, claro, básicamente es aguantar, absorber daño, tanquear y molestar y sobre todo llegar a matar porque sobrevives más que tus rivales como un Doctor Mundo, como una especie así. Pero con los stuns también re molesto, re insoportable y rushearte full daño, como explican, te caetean, todo el mundo te pelotudea, te cesean, te dejan quieto y te revientan. You want to get out as many bear stuns as possible, turning on your tiger stance and really dishing out the damage. Proper stance management is vital to getting out all of your abilities value as much as possible and making sure that you're not stuck in the wrong stance and waiting out that global cooldown. Since Meta knows that Udyr is basically on a timer to how useless he's going to become, Meta always tries to shock call and tries to make sure that the game ends as quickly as possible. When your champion is so simple, so basic, you have to use other tools in League of Legends to become useful. He often tries to babysit and encourage his teammates to play well. He tries to just talk through his teammates to prevent them from going mental boom. Though he can get frustrated at times, he has a good mentality of non-toxicity and always tries to direct his teammates towards the proper calls, the proper plays, and a it's positive so attitude. I actually got married about three years ago, and she's been one of the biggest inspirations that helped me really keep in control of my toxicity because I was a toxic player at first. I never got, I've never gotten a chat restriction, but I was, I blamed my teammates. I spent more time blaming my teammates. Bueno, esta es la parte más importante del video y seguramente la mayoría no lo haya escuchado. Literal, el chabón admite que culpa de echarle la culpa a sus compañeros y no hacerme a culpa y no ponerse las pilas y mejorar el mismo, literalmente se termina cagando la existencia y pierde las partidas en vez de contribuir, destruye. Then taking responsibility for my own actions. I got stuck in Diamond 4 because of that and once I started taking responsibility for my own actions and my own gameplay, I climbed naturally. To move together and take inhib. Siempre hay que mantener una actitud positiva, siempre, it's OG. It's OG. siempre, y tratar de responsabilizarse, responsabilizarse por tu propio acto, y si un compañero so hace mal las cosas, trata de ayudarlo, ¿me entendés? Si no tienes nada bueno para decir, no we digas nada, contribuye. All in all, Udyr is probably the most basic champion you're gonna find in League of Legends. He's not overpowered, he's not insanely frustrating, and he is a straight stack check champion. But if you want a real challenge in the jungle, then Udyr might be the right pick for you. If you're looking to get even more lessons about how to dominate with Udyr, then come check me out at twitch.tv slash or you